Um, got Chris from Lancaster Home Improvement Agency to talk us through um, how they're supporting people with uh, energy, their energy retrofit service. So um, over to you, Chris. Thanks, Paul. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Chris Park. I'm the Housing Adaptations Manager for Lancaster HIA. Paul's asked me along to run through what we're doing in Lancaster at the moment to try and help our vulnerable residents um, keep warm this winter. So just a bit of background on who we are. We're an in-house HIA within the District Council of a two-tier authority. Our district contains over 60,000 households with higher than average concentrations of older residents, disabled residents and areas of high deprivation and fuel poverty. We've delivered HIA type services for over 20 years now, starting out with a single handy person. We've grown to 15 members of staff, including five handy persons, three tech officers and three trusted assessor level four caseworkers. At the heart of what we do, though, is uh, disabled adaptations and our current annual DFG budget has risen to just over two million pounds. From there, we've grown the HIA to be become a provider of minor aids and adaptations for social services and the NHS. And we provide a, uh, the local hospital with a discharge service. Um, we also give residents who don't qualify for grants the opportunity to pay for small adaptations. And we also run a free two hour handy person service for vulnerable residents. But one of the issues that uh, year on year that we're striving to help our clientele with is fuel poverty. So what are we doing? Well, in July 2021, uh, we introduced a new energy retrofit service for all our DFG applicants. We recruited a new technical officer who we trained up as a domestic energy, uh, energy assessor and also a PAS accredited energy retrofit assessor. And we've incorporated this as a, a, an actual part of the DFG process now. So a caseworker will assess a resident for DFG eligibility and if they qualify, we'll offer them a visit from Gemma, our energy retrofit officer. Gemma carries out a full property energy assessment, um, provides the resident with an EPC and a report of how to improve the energy efficiency of the home. Gemma then creates a bit of a priority shopping list of interventions. So in other words, she decides which improvements are worth doing based on the cost, how and when they might be funded, and the, also the effect it might have on the EPC, and also the individual requirements of the resident. So why are we doing it? Well, in January 2019, Lancaster City Council declared a district-wide climate emergency and subsequently embarked on several projects with a view of making council activity, activities carbon neutral by 2030. Some of the projects included vehicle fleet electrification, upgrading the council's public buildings, but also improving council housing stock to an EPC rating of C by 2030. The retrofit officer post came about from a conversation that we had with our director about what the HIA might be able to do in the private sector to help out targeting the climate emergency. And it was at that time that we were in discussions with other district councils in the county around applying for Green Deal local authority delivery funding or, or LAD funding that Nick picked up on before. One of the issues that we raised was that some of the previous government funded projects often gave clients measures that were the easiest to install rather than those that were based best for the property and their individual needs. We think that any scheme should be about allowing the occupant to keep warm whenever they want really. We feel it's not enough to just adapt someone's home to improve accessibility if the home is so cold that it contributes to illness and falls. People with disabilities are often not able to be more active to warm up, leaving them more susceptible to effects of a cold home than you or, you or I. Um, the charity Scope found recently that a third of disabled people have cut their energy consumption over the last year to, just to afford the bills. They also found that 29% of the working age, uh, working age disabled people struggle with bills and nearly a quarter of those people turn off heating even though the home is, uh, is already cold. So quite often just improving a heating system for a disabled occupant isn't enough. Many DFG applicants can't afford to heat their homes, um, regardless of how efficient the boiler is or, or the other type of heating. So a fabric first approach really needs to be taken to make heating their homes affordable. 
you need to insulate the building to reduce heat loss, which then in turn lowers the energy consumption. And therefore you can see your energy bills start to come down. So how are we doing it? We used our own funds to create this post of uh, a retrofit officer. But because we could only afford one officer, we had to make sure that the scope didn't exceed what Gemma could handle. That's why we targeted the surface, uh, service purely at our DFG clients. However, as soon as Gemma was up and running, our council housing department asked to borrow Gemma's services to assess their least efficient housing stock. They then applied for LAD funding to have those houses upgraded. Now, the organisation that delivers the LAD funding didn't actually have an energy retrofit assessor in our district. So they offered to fund Gemma to do this, effectively making her, co her position cost neutral. And they've funded it ever since, which is great. Um, the scheme has not been without its difficulties, though, mainly because the funding resources is run by a provider and contractors which, who are out of our, outside of our district. Gemma's has found that the speed of interventions is not always fast enough to help some of our clients before winter, which puts them at quite high risk of illness and falls, which can obviously lead to hospital admissions. It's for these cases that we've decided to use DFG funding and local contractors to try and help people now. Our rationale for using DFG budget to help is based around the mandatory provision in the legislation that allows grants to make the property safer and also to provide better and more controllable heating. We feel that both these provisions can be interpreted slightly more flexibly. For, for example, how can a property be safe if the temperature is making the occupant ill or prone to falls? Equally, there's no real control over the heating system if it's gotta be on all the time due to poor insulation. So in terms of safety, a cold house can be just as unsafe as a house with say trip hazards, for example. So what have we achieved so far? Well, our retrofit scheme has visited 109 residents since it started and has currently raised the EPCs of 33 DFG applicants to a, uh, a rating of C or higher. 19 of those properties had original EPCs ranging from D through to the worst rating of a G. Just to give you a bit of a case study, um, one resident asked us to help out with his bathing um, so our caseworker visited to assess for a DFG. She got an OT involved and then asked Gemma to get involved. To be honest, this house was pretty bad. It was a, an EPC rating of a G, so it had no insulation whatsoever. Single glazed windows, quite a few of which were broken. Um, single glazed timber frame doors and a broken heating system. So Gemma set about getting the uh, necessary up upgrades. So here's what we did. We used our own handy person service to fit LED bulbs throughout the property. They also installed underfloor insulation via the basement. Um, cavity wall insulation and loft insulation were installed using a regional contractor. We used a local heating engineer to install a new boiler, fit a room stat, and also install TRVs throughout the property. And finally, um, we got a local double glazing installer who replaced all the old single glazed windows and doors with new UPVC double glazed units. The total work, uh, cost of the work came to £9,551, the majority of which we managed to source from LAD funding and the Eco scheme. The EPC before the work, uh, as I said, was a G, but after this, we, after all these interventions, we managed to improve it up to a C, which was a great result. That's a rundown of the facts and figures of the case, but the real value was exp expressed by the resident to us. He said it's not only made a massive difference to the warmth of his house and his general comfort, but it's also affected his mental health in a positive way too. His curtains are open now, as you can see, whereas before he actually had to keep them shut to minimise the drafts from the windows. Even his, tidies, uh, his garden's tidied up now, which is nice to see. So it's been a real positive outcome for him. So just to conclude, what's next for our scheme? Well, um, after taking a punt and financing the retrofit scheme, we always hoped it would gain traction and attract funding from other organisations who've heard that there's someone in the district that can try and act fast to help the most vulnerable. 
so far it seems to be bearing some fruit. Um, we've recently been awarded another £129,000 of funding from the County Council to carry out affordable warmth grants, which again gives us instant funding to use local contractors and our own team to provide most of the measures that the LAD funding offered. So that's an overview of what we're doing in Lancaster to tackle cold homes. Um, I hope it's been of some interest to you. If anyone wants any more information or to ask questions, please drop me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Right, thank you, Chris. So, so that case study, was was that fairly typical of the um, cases that you deal with or is, is that kind of at the, at the upper end of... Um... Yeah, there's there's not too many of those cases, fortunately. Uh, well, not too many that we've come across. But as I said before, we, we've had to limit our scope because we've only got one officer. So we are only targeting the FG applicants um, because we feel, you know, we're in a good position to 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 um, be able to help these really vulnerable members of our district. But yeah, there's been a few um, E rating, F rating and G rating. Um, cases. Um, unfortunately, we've we also have to balance the cost and the speed of interventions on these. So the big gains that you get, you you look to insulate and provide fabric first interventions, but you do get big gains from say solar PV and and combine it with a heat pump. Um, those types of interventions, you, you, we can't really justify using DFG, the DFG pot of money to do that fast. So we have to refer them over to the, the big LAD funding schemes to tackle. Um, and those sort of waves, as uh, as was previously mentioned by Nick, they, you know, they, they can stop and then suddenly start again. So mm. the big the big interventions can sometimes take a while. So, so in that case study, what, what adaptations did, did the guy have done at the same time? Bathroom and stair lift. Okay. And, and was it all done at the same time as kind of part of the same same contract so it wasn't too disruptive? Yeah, well, we have um, we, we have a caseworker that does all the assessment and we have a, a separate technical officer that deals with the um, bathroom and the stair lift. And Gemma, who's the retrofit officer, she will she will jump on the energy type works as quickly as she can, really. So we're, we're beholden to how fast the contractors can, can get yeah. on it, really, yeah. uh, which is the same as any adaptation yes. yeah and uh, i suppose kind of in, in terms of um kind of getting corporate buy in to to extend your kind of housing assistance policy to do this sort of stuff presumably from what you said that the kind of members were on board and, and kind of driving it forward by the sound of it yeah yeah we had no no objections whatsoever um we've not really done anything um in terms of placing it in the rro um we wanted to act fast um and obviously, you know, getting cabinet members involved sometimes um, can be a bit lengthier than we, we wanted to if we're trying to help someone just before winter. So, you know, we we tend to, as, as I mentioned in the uh, presentation, we tend to look at the two provisions of safety and provision of heating it's slightly more flexibly. Um, yeah. Fortunately, we've not been challenged yet, but we're, we're not, you know, um, taking liberties we're, we're just helping yeah. the people that really are in danger of, of having a fall or uh, a cold related illness yeah i, th I think um you, you're quite unlikely to get a complaint if you're doing something good for somebody are you? It, it's not likely no. to, uh, to result in a complaint yeah. so is are you, you say kind of say that the county have been interested in this and funded it is, is that as a result of seeing kind of benefits to them from um from the impact you've had yeah exactly we've um we have um sort of done a limited bit of marketing and advertisement mainly with our stakeholder partners such as county council ot's um and you know other sort of charitable agencies uh, that might need our help because as i said before with having only one retrofit officer you know she can easily get spread very thin yeah. um so the county council have seen the work that we've done so far with Gemma, and they've managed to get hold of a, a, a pot of money recently, and, and without us knowing about it, just uh, you know provided it to us with with sort of no no strings attached really to okay. tackle tackle problems before winter. It's a nice surprise, isn't it? It was. It was a really good surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and in terms of um, kind of neighbouring districts across Lancaster, Lancashire, are, are they doing anything similar? Is is that as, as your your kind of impact started to spread 
Um, I'm not too sure whether they've done something as as similar uh, to what we have. Um, maybe not because, uh, well, maybe not last year when we set it up because the the consortia that got together for for the lad funding comprised of quite a lot of um, district councils around around Lancashire and they they gave the reins for the funding over to uh, an organization called cozy homes in lancashire and rear projects and they actually didn't have their own energy retrofit assessor um so that's why they funded Gemma for us um so i'm assuming there wasn't too many other organizations that had that position in place either okay okay so i might i may be wrong okay maybe, maybe for the future maybe for the future yeah. maybe, maybe they've kind of listened today and uh, well i think it's you know if people can it's worth delving yeah. into because she's almost been cost neutral since we set it up yeah great thank thank chris what, what just just out of interest um what, what training did um, did Gemma have she was tra- we, we we employed her as a technical officer at first yeah. She's actually an electrician by trade, okay. which is great, added bonus yeah. for the team. Yeah. Um, and we immediately put her through domestic energy assessor training and then the PAS accredited um, energy retrofit assessor okay. training, yeah. which is part of all the, in order to, in order to um, receive LAD funding, and yep. for contractors to do it, you've you've got to have a retrofit assessment. Okay. You've got to have a retrofit coordinator to oversee the works. Yep. It's essentially impartial advice that probably previous projects might not have have, have had. You know, it's yeah. historically contractors used to get given the, the jobs and they'd, they'd get in there and do as many as possible. But this is sort of overseen impartially now. Okay, great, great. Thank you, thank you Chris. R- really good. And okay. um, yeah, look forward to seeing you at the awards. Thank you. Okay, cheers, Chris.